Oliver, Sir Francis Drake reputedly continued playing bowls even as the Spanish Armada approached. The Financial Services Authority, the UK regulator, reportedly carried on worrying about consumer issues, about credit card charges and things, even as the financial crisis came, came towards it. Now we have a document today from the Financial Conduct Authority, which is half the old FSA, if you like, and it's going to be concentrating on consumer affairs. What does this journey to the FCA entail? So this is the, uh, the FCA's uh, document where it sets out exactly what it plans to do and how it plans to do it. As you say, the Financial Conduct Authority is one half of the old FSA. It's going to be looking at uh, really the relationship between the financial services industry and consumers. So this document sets out how it wants to act. It's a two-month consultation period so people can, can give their opinions. And very much the, the attitude of the FCA is that it wants to be a lot more forward-looking in the way it regulates the financial services industry. One of the accusations in the past was that the FSA was far too backward-looking. It would wait for a problem to come up, it would spot a problem, then it would try to deal with it. What the FCA wants to do, and it's going to monitor all kinds of metrics to do this, is to spot problems before they come up and, and deal okay. with them quickly. So it will see things like PPI mis-selling, payment protection insurance mis-selling before it happened. Does it have a crystal ball or x-ray vision? How, how is it really going to work? And, and what are the banks going to do? Are they going to roll their eyes and just say, oh no, more regulation. It, who's going to pay for this? Well, I, I suspect a, a lot of the banks will roll their eyes and say, oh, no more regulation, but they'll have to accept it. And then in, in the end, it is the, the banks will have to pay with it. There'll be, there'll be a lot more um, conversation with the, the FCA before product to launch. The FCA will also have the power to ban products if it doesn't like them uh, or if it doesn't like who those products are being sold to. But what the FCA wants to avoid is, is what it calls an oil spill which is what we have with PPI mis-selling, where it's a big mess, it's very expensive to clean up, it's very difficult. It wants to... And you to get a lot of ambulance chasing law firms. Get a lot of ambulance onto. chasing law firms. And this really is the, the other part where I think the, the FCA needs to address is, is, if you like, the consumer end of conduct. Because now you have a situation where there's a lot of companies jumping onto the, uh, the PPI bandwagon, uh, making fraudulent claims. Some banks say that up to half of the claims that come into them on PPI are fraudulent. So the idea is to avoid this kind of situation. The, the question really is whether, whether it needs a change of conduct on, on behalf of just the banks or whether we also need someone to look at the, the claims industry. As it will were. the FCA have sank? Will it be able to fine people or Will it have sanctions at its disposal? Yeah, it will have a lot more powers than the FSA had. It'll be able to ban products that it doesn't like. It'll be able to ban advertising it doesn't like. It'll have a lot of power to, to look a lot more deeply into the business models of, of various of these products. So uh, it will be able to do that. But also, and this is where the FCA is slightly unclear at the moment, it might have the power to... Um, to improve competition between banks. The government's very keen that the FCA sees competition as a, a core part of its role. Okay, maybe maybe the thing then is that it first gets right the, the mechanics of how it works and how it does things and worries about uh, competition as the next thing. One step at a time is probably better and to get it right. Thank you very much, Oliver.